Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I talk about the NWSL, women's soccer, just soccer, only soccer. I'm so glad I waited before doing this video. Last week, I did a video talking about the firing of Washington Spirit coach Chris Ward and the very little details surrounding his firing slash why he was fired. I'll leave a link in the description below to the last video I did covering Chris Ward's firing. To summarize, there was an incident on Friday, August 19, 2022, where Ward, according to Stephen Goff's article for the Washington Post, Ward berated a player, prompting others to vocally come to their teammate's defense. Pablo Iglesias Maurer of The Athletic also notes in a press conference with Mark Krikorian, spirit manager and president of sporting operations, Chris Ward verbally confronted a player for their performance in a way some found inappropriate. On Friday, August 26, 2022, a day after Krikorian, Krikorian's press conference, Meg Linehan and Pablo Iglesias Maurer released this article where they interviewed Chris Ward and asked about his perspective on the Friday, August 19th incident. Before I get into it, though, I do have the article linked below. As of filming this video, the article was not hidden behind a paywall. I don't know if that changed. When the article first came out, there was a paywall. I'm also only going to be focusing on the questions in regards to the August 19th incident and not the Spirit's performance so far this season. That all being said, let's get into so, it. So, starting with the first question, Ward was asked, how would you describe what happened at training last Friday, which has been described up to now as simply a confrontation between you and a player? What can you tell us about that? Ward responded saying, yeah, so we were doing some situational work on how to control the game in various scenarios, going um, down a goal, up a goal. Whether I hadn't explained it well enough or there was just some conf confusion in the moment, one of the players seemed confused about it. At that point, I'd asked for a sub to come on and I was going to have her go off and talk to one of the assistant coaches that was on the sideline to just kind of walk her through things and use the whiteboard to show what was happening. She didn't really want to go off the field, which I understand that. You're competitive, you want to stay out there and get things right. At that point, for me, it was easier just to swap her out and explain what was happening just to her as opposed to stopping the entire session for everyone. There was some arguing about her going off or staying on the field. I asked her to leave again, and at the end of the day, I ended up getting upset and yelling at her to get off the field. It was probably the first time all year that I've ever raised my voice to any of the players. I certainly have a track record of yelling at referees. But it was, hey, we don't have time for this right now. You have to get off the field because we have to continue. All right, so if that happened, it seems reasonable enough. Player didn't understand something, was doing something wrong, needed more clarification. Coach wanted her to come off so she can go over the strategy or play again with an assistant coach. But the question I have is, how do you go from yelling commands, orders, and instructions to a player, which is fine in my opinion, to berating a player to the point where her teammates had to vocally step up and come to her defense. According to the previous articles, quote, people familiar with the situation said Ward berated a player. Another question I would have asked is, what did you say to this player? Again, it's fine if you're yelling commands, orders, and instructions. That is normal. What coach doesn't do that? You're you're not fully paying attention to the coach, especially when you're so focused with what's going on on the field. There's a lot going around you, going on around you. There's a lot happening around you. So you're not always going to be able to hear what the coach is saying. And that's why some coaches have to yell in order to get a player's attention. However, 
What is it that you said that upset these players so much that they reacted in this way, that they reacted so strongly? Ward was then asked, would you characterize the way you address this player as inappropriate? Ward said, I think looking at it now, if I had to do it again, I would do it differently. Typically, my style is one-on-one, -on -one, having a conversation off to the side. This is the first time where I just kind of use volume instead of pulling a player aside by myself and going through it. From that standpoint, there wasn't any name-calling, belittling, or anything like that. It wasn't over the top from a language standpoint. Looking at it, there was a lot of confusion around the situation. It was hot, everyone had just played 60 minutes of a scrimmage. There was frustration on my part that what we were asking to have happen wasn't happening. What I did clearly didn't handle things, so yeah, I think I would clearly handle it differently for sure. Again, it wasn't name calling or anything like that, but I think the individual calling out of a player at that moment creates an embarrassing situation for that player. As a coach, you never really want to do that. Again, what did you say to this player? Ward says there wasn't any name calling, belittling, and it wasn't over the top from a language standpoint. Are you saying the player slash players were upset because they were being yelled at? Because that player was being called out? Geez, if that's the case, we may as well fire Laura Harvey of OL Rain or my coaches or every coach across all sports. It's not about being yelled at. It's about what is being yelled, what is being said. And here's the thing, the spirit players have been through a lot last year. Emotional and verbal abuse can be just as scarring as physical abuse. And I get that these players may be a little raw and sensitive from that, but they're still professional athletes. They are still able, they will still be able to tell the difference between yelling in the sense of instructions and commands and yelling in the sense of being mean, rude, disrespectful, and degrading. In the end, it comes down to what is being said. What was said that made these players distinguish this type of yelling as being rude, mean, degrading, or disrespectful? I really want to know what was said. Again, if he was yelling at her to get off the field, I think her teammates would have coaxed her off or encouraged her to get off. I don't think they would have reacted so strongly if that was the case. The third question Ward was asked, does tape exist of this confrontation? Ward said, we film all of our training sessions. They're all there. If the league or players association comes to question me, I have that. I looked at the tape. That's why I can look at it and say I was never in anyone's face. I was never that close to a player. I never walked anyone off the field. In my last video, I said I don't think the tape should be released because the players deserve privacy and if it circulates, it could cause the players more pain and harm. But if what Ward is saying is true, that this was just a big misunderstanding, a big miscommunication, and there wasn't any name-calling, belittling, or over-the-top language, then release the tape. Let the leak watch it, let the Players Association watch it, let a reporter watch it and write about it, or let the public see it. The last one is unlikely, though. If all of what Ward is saying so far is true, then we won't see a player getting berated. If what Ward is saying is true, then we'll be able to hear what was said and the viewers, the league, the players association can come to their own conclusion and decide if it was appropriate or not. Also, I thought of this when I got back from my run, but this video could clear Ward's name. 
if I was accused of doing something wrong, but I had v video proving I didn't do what I was accused of, I would want to release it so that I could clear my name. Ward was then asked, did you get the sense from other players in that moment that you'd gone too far? Ward said one player had come over, grabbed the player in question, and pulled her off the field. Then assistant coach, now interim head coach, Angela Salem, had walked over a minute later and was talking to me. One of the other players had come over and said, Look, she shouldn't have talked back. You were entitled to say what you wanted to say, but it looked like as you were walking after her, that made it look a little bit aggressive. I told her, look, I hear you 100%. I can see that. I did not chase the player off the field. I was never in her face. I didn't move from where... I was more than 10 yards, and I was never within 10 yards of her. But they suggested that my actions made it look more aggressive. I have to hold my hand up and say, yeah, that wasn't okay. It wasn't the right thing. It wasn't the right way to handle it, and I have to do better. Okay, gonna stop right there and say, according to Ward, there are two sides going on here. Did you or did you not walk up or walk after this player? Ward has a player saying that he was walking after the player who was coming off. Then Ward said he didn't chase the player off the field, that he didn't move or was nowhere near her. Then the player told Ward that his actions made it look more aggressive. So which is it? Did he go near this player? Did he get in her face? If he didn't walk or chase after this player, then what were the actions that the player found a little bit aggressive? Ward continues, from there we ended just a couple of minutes later and everyone was pretty quiet. I walked straight into the office at that point. One of the players came in and talked to me immediately after and said, I'm upset about what happened. I don't think that's okay. I think that there was confusion there and I don't want to see this again. I told that player that I heard them 100%. We had a meeting prior to the team retreat with the players, myself, Washington Spear General Manager and President of Soccer Operations, Mark Krikorian, and Ang, I'm guessing that's Angela Salem, where I apologize to the team for being too aggressive or coming off that way. I realize it's not just a thing about how I felt at that moment, it's about how it's perceived by everyone else, and that has to be taken into account. And so I told them, look, I had some conversations with you guys, I hear you guys, I apologize, I hear what you're saying, if I'm going to set up the best learning environment, then it has to be done a different way. It can't be like that. I left and that was it. Uh, I was told me maybe 10 minutes later, it's probably best just to let everyone decompress this weekend. It's probably best to just let you decompress this weekend. I told them, I hear you guys, no problem. I don't want to sit here and belabor anything or make it more difficult. So that was it. I feel as though there are still some details of the incident missing here. From analyzing Ward's side, it sounded like things escalated very quickly, too quickly. But I just feel like there is a big chunk or a gap in this story that's missing. <laughs> there has to be a better reason why the players reacted so strongly, why the spirit reacted so strongly. This goes beyond yelling, beyond a miscommunication or misunderstanding. What was said to that player? Did Ward or did Ward not walk after a player in an aggressive way? I think the answers to these two questions are what's missing here. Ward was then asked more questions about his firing, 
where things had gone wrong with the spirit this season. But like I said earlier, I'm just going to be focusing on the incident that happened on Friday, August 19th. I'm going to jump ahead to this question. Did you think you'd lost the locker room? Ward said, honestly, no. I think that the last week of training that we'd had was some of the most intense stuff we'd done all year. The attitude of the players to go out and compete and work hard, you know, from my standpoint, there were very positive signs. Now, you don't know what's being said in the locker room, obviously. That being said, i just gone through a round of individual meetings with all the players, talking to everyone. The questions were about how has the season been for you? What do you think about where we are now? What are we looking at going forward? And all of those were positive conversations. From where I was evaluating things from, it looked like the team was still working very hard and continuing to try and push. So Ward is saying that he didn't lose the locker room, but the thing is, he did lose the locker room. In Stephen Goff's article from August 22nd, the day Ward was fired, he writes, Ward's relationship with several players had deteriorated this year. Three people familiar, um, three people familiar with the situation said. Then in Goff's article on August 25th, after Krikorian's press conference, he writes, he, Ward, had lost the trust of his players and his relationships with many of them had deteriorated. Coupled with the spirit's poor results, that person said it had reached a breaking point. Yeah, it definitely has. A, bre a breaking point was definitely reached with these players with Ward. I think this has been building for some time, some time now. Um, this incident was the thing that just finally pushed everyone over the edge. Anyway, the reaction to Chris Ward's side was mixed. Some people believed his side of events, others did not, and sided with the players. But then there was a surprise twist to this whole story. On Saturday, August 27th, in a post-match interview after the Spirit drew 2-2 against the Houston Dash, Andy Sullivan and the Spirit players released this statement. It reads, we would like to start off with a statement on behalf of the players. Firstly, we are frustrated that this is necessary given our history. Secondly, we are angered by Chris Ward's answers in the piece by The Athletic. We know the idiom that there are two sides to every story, but that is simply not the case in this scenario. We know his interview to be a completely inaccurate recollection of a serious situation, and furthermore, the apology offered to us last Friday demonstrates a misalignment in his words and actions towards this team. The players fully support the decision of the club to relieve him of his duties as head coach, and we have every intention of cooperating in a proper course of action as it relates to circumstances like this one. We will no longer take any questions regarding his dismissal or make any further comments on it at this time. We are focused on our current performances and the rest of the season and moving forward as a group. Andy Sullivan, Washington Spirit co-captain. So that is the statement from Andy Sullivan and the Washington Spirit players, basically saying Chris Ward's side of events is inaccurate to how the players remembered and experienced the incident on Friday, August 19th. The statement from the players of the Washington Spirit calls into question the legitimacy of Ward's story slash recollection, um, recollection of events from that Friday's training session. Not only are the players saying Ward's side is inaccurate, but they are standing by the club's decision to relieve Ward of his coaching duties for the Washington Spirit. 
For now, I'm just going to leave it at that. The player's statement says it all. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I can't say for certain whether this is the conclusion to this story. We'll have to see in the upcoming days. All my sources, all the articles I use for this video are linked in the description below. That is all I have for you guys today or tonight. Good luck to the spirit team and spirit players, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.